this guy is so we defined how we can specify selector so i need to specify selector here and i will have properties and the values so in the selector last time we discussed element selector that means i'll directly specify the tag name and then i need to specify this is the property and this is the value for it okay then uh, have we discussed id selector or not for the only element of the perfect okay so we need to discuss all these selectors today mm -hmm. and plus yes last time we discussed about properties of margin mm -hmm. now when i say ma margin it is from top right top right bottom and left right mm -hmm. uh, so i can specify here four values mm -hmm. or i can specify two values now when i specify two value it is top bottom left and right Right. Okay, so this is margin, mm. and similarly, I can write padding also. Mm. Now, what is the difference between padding? So now I have a content model. So at the uh, internally, it will be content. Mm. So the distance between my margin and the actual content will be my padding. Right. But from starting of the page and the border, this will be my margin. Right. So I can specify a tag, and I can specify property and the value. Mm. So we discussed how I can add a uh, from Google Fonts, so for that I specified a font family, mm -hmm. and in a HTML, okay. So in HTML we imported something from that Google Fonts site. Uh, with that, so this link is to so we have to just copy this from. Okay. All right. Uh, then we display display in line and all these things. Okay. So. so uh, now I want a proper grid structure for this. Okay, so what I want uh, after this, let's say I want some padding. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, then okay, so this is my tagline. I want some background color for that. Okay, and uh, to learn about cutting edge technology, so something I have wide with technology wave. Okay, now what is this image? So I have this image. So let me make it as a header. So I need to provide a fixed uh, height and width for this image. Mm. Okay. So this will be my fixed background image, mm. and I do I don't think this is giving much information. So let's remove this. Okay. Mm. Now when I say machine learning, mm. oh, it's this is the image we added for machine learning, right? Mm. Alright. Okay. So what I want then machine learning. Okay. Here I should have an image, and on the right hand side of it, I need a text okay similarly for cloud i want text here and the image on the right hand side okay mm -hmm. and let's try to integrate our form also which we created uh, in the last two sessions mm -hmm. okay so, so let's start from background so for now i would just want to add a background to my header or did we add just a form for this and this is fine so, so let's add a background okay mm -hmm. uh i think i i should need some margin from the left hand side also mm -hmm. right okay so for that what i will do let's go to main.css where is my body okay so this is my top and bottom Move that part like down there which one this one this part in the right okay so this is my body so this is my top and bottom and still i have set three rgm mode and still it should make this so, so how about if i make it four rgm let's save it and let's refresh this looks like so the only way to inspect the caching is just try to inspect it and if i select body Let's see what are the rules I'm getting here. So it's not showing any rules here. Alright, so when I go here, it is saying ally, 
but it's not applying my margin. If I just do the pixels and let's say two pixels. Okay. So is my CSS getting loaded correctly? Find the style set me for CSS. Uh, what do I have always? So, so I got an error here. So, so. Okay. So, right. okay. so I have this left padding. I guess three was the perfect one. Let's make it three and let's make it two. So you remember this EM and REM, right? Yeah. So we have EM, REM, we have percentage and pixels. So pixel is something which we should try to avoid. Right? Okay. So uh, where I want to uh, apply the background, so I want to apply the background for this now. Right? Okay. So which section is this? If I go here, this is if I go to my HTML page now. So this entire navbar, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to apply some styles to navbar. Mm -hmm. So what should I write here? So okay. So. Again, I can use my element selector, so I'm saying now or uh, opening brackets. Okay. So to specify a background, we have this background property, right? So for background, we have multiple attributes. This is my background color. I can specify my color here. So best site for colors is your HTML color tools or a material design. So I'm going with HTML colors. So I'm taking this, copying the hex code over here, specify some color, now save it, and go to our page. So now if I refresh it, this will give me some background color for this, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Now, if I want everything to be displayed as a header, so the good to practice will be I should not keep this margin uh, here for the entire body. Okay, so let's go with that approach. So, what I'm doing for this body, I'm not putting this margin as of now. So, now let's comment this out, just save it so that now it should look like a header for me. Okay. Uh, still, we got some margins, so let's set it to zero zero. Then, so if I say margin zero and zero, okay. So now it looks like this is a complete header for me, okay. So, one more interesting thing so, whenever you have to set a background color, right, then we have something called linear gradient. Okay. Um, I will think the color name. Okay. So for this linear gradient, now I can specify the multiple colors. Okay. So here, if I say I'm getting only one background, okay. So I want some kind of a transition here, okay. So that I can provide using the linear gradient, okay. So either I can specify two colors. So if I go here, now let let me select two shades. So so two shades. Let's start with purple. So I'm just putting one and one. Okay. 
Let's see this. Although this is going to be a very bad color combination. Okay, so. And what happened? The processor is specified. So this works with only with the background, not with background color. So for background color, it only accepts only hex values. Mm -hmm. So now if I want a gradient, then I can specify something like this. This is looking really ugly. So let me change it a bit. So let's go with two classes. Mm -hmm. This is one. And the third one. Okay, so this will give you some kind of gradient like this. Now, first attribute I can specify the angle. So now you can see it is actually starting the lighter color as this, and this is the darker shade. So it's from top to bottom. Okay. So I can specify the direction. So let's say I'm saying to right. Okay. This is the first attribute. So now if I save it, so this will give me this lighter shade on the right hand side, uh, left hand side, and it will become darker like this. If I say to left. Okay, now it will start the lighter color this side and darker this side. Okay, so this is one way, or you can specify the degree. So let's say I want color in 45 degrees. Okay, so this will be visible when you have a bigger block, but you can specify degree also. Now you can specify n number of colors, it's not mandatory to only provide two colors. Okay, so you can specify as many colors you want. Okay, so what I'm doing, let's change this tab color to white. So what changes should I make? So I want this machine learning cloud of development to be in a white. Or let's make everything in a white. My entire nav So where are we specifying the color? So for H1, we specified this is the white color, and uh, in default, it is taking blue, I guess, or we set inline, I guess. Are we setting inline color? Cloud web development, HDF maps, main.css, this is my H1 color, no, it's none. So, okay, so this is taking default uh, link then, right? So I want everything white. So just to pick a color. So this can be all left, or you can specify the variation also. So what I'm seeing that for H1, this should be white. And for H2 also, I want font. I find Okay, so now I'm saving it. Let's go back here and let's refresh it. Where? H1? So this is looking something like this.
Okay. So now if you see these are my links. Okay. But even if I go here, it is not showing anything. Right. So uh, what are the different transition I can apply on my links? Okay. So I just have it here. Da, 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 da. So if I say link, mm -hmm. I can have this kind of file. If that is a link. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is the style you want to apply when it will look normal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then this is uh, when you want to be to be visited. If someone clicks on the link, then what should be the color? If someone hovers over it, then what should be the style of it? And when it's active, I mean just click and that time what should be the color? Okay, so these are the attributes. So how it is generally used that for a link, you will specify a general style. Let's say what should be the font color and what should be the font style. Okay, and then for a different attributes, you can change the colors. Okay. So for now, uh, we are already controlling all these things. So just uh, change the color of this using pseudo elements. Okay. So mm -hmm. when I say a colon link, now this is my normal link, right? Mm -hmm. So when I say colon and I, if I specify something, it is called as a pseudo elements. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so I'm saying in that case, your color should be, uh, it should remain the same, right? So this is my white color. Okay. Now someone let's say hovers over it. Okay. So for that I'm specifying this hover. So now in that case I need to change my color. So this is a blue background. Purple looks nice. Any suggestion? So let's make it purple. So now, if someone hovers over it, so they should be purple in color. So I saved it. If I refresh it now, if I go here, and why it's not applying this? So it's becoming purple. But it's actually getting overridden by the font color, I guess. So, so let's go and inspect. So if I click here, this is machine learning and the dot link. So this key colon link is not getting applied. So this is getting overridden. Right. So found finally serif cover. So when I hover, you pizzas. That loading the background looks so can you try in your system? Mm -hmm. It's changing the line color, which shows it's getting applied, but it looks like it is getting overridden from something else. Uh, it looks like it is getting overridden from H2 tag. All right. Okay. But that, what was the last alignment uh, for that? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll explain it why.
is our index.html how we are defining okay oh, no, no, no. so this is an h2 tag and this is my name. Uh, let's try a different type of selector here okay, and let's see so i'll explain it uh, what is your class selector okay so now let's say if i want to specify something uh, which is repeating on my page okay and for all that thing i want to apply a same kind of style then i can specify something as a class selector okay so how to specify class selector i will just specify class is equals to and let me call it this class as a header okay. or let's say menu okay so i want this for all my h2s now class menu class menu, class menu. okay All right. So, uh, for an element uh, selector we have specified, I directly specify this uh, tag name here. Okay. But if you have this class selector, and now to apply a CSS for that, we just write dot and the class name. Okay. So, for now, let's come into this out. Okay. So, we write dot and the class name we are writing. Hmm. Okay. So, this is what uh, now to apply the CSS for this. Okay. Uh, so let's give it a try by changing the color. So now I'm just saying it red. So it. All right, so this is working. Okay. So when someone hovers over this top menu, uh, color. Uh, color is supposed to. Now this is working. So as a uh, internal earlier, if you, if you try to debug why it was not working earlier. Okay. So here I'm specifying this uh, link tag, right? Now this is the general CSS for all the links I have specified. Okay. But for a specificity, that means for a particular element, now I'm specifying this is the H2 tag. Mm -hmm. And for H2, I'm specifically selecting a font color of this. And that is the reason it is not allowing me to override it. Okay, so we will talk more about this when we discuss cascading effect in CSS. Okay, so what exactly the different parameters helps us. So, so for now, let's uh, make it like this only. So for now, I'll change it to color as this. Okay, and someone holds over it, that's it. This color okay so this is how you will write all your class selector that you will specify a class here mm -hmm. and to use to apply some size you will use dot and the selector mm -hmm. yeah you have like writing your class name mm -hmm. class name or kind of class where we are defining class in html in html so for attribute mm -hmm. for h2 just yeah, class h2. equal to CSS, like, in CSS, we are defining a dot. Class. Yes, in CSS, we write dot and the class. Uh, now just have a look where are we defining this uh, learn about it okay you want something in the yeah, book yeah. css 
So I'll just say dot main. So just have a look here. Where are we defining this? Learn about technology, techno, current technology. So it's we are specifying a separate section for this, and we are writing a ride with the technology. Okay, all right. So let's create like this. So this image you will keep it for your machine learning. Okay, mm -hmm. and I'll keep title and at the side of this I want this image, uh, but for a header. So let's specify this. Uh, so learn about all this cutting edge technologies. It should be below this image I'm specifying. Okay, and I want to, this image to be a big image of let's this full size, right? Okay. So let's go back to our HTML. Okay. So how what we are specifying? We have specified this nav tag, right? And this is our header tag. So in the header section, we specified this H2 and this image and SRC, right? Okay, so I am keeping this at bottom. So let's say control X, control V. If I refresh it now, right. I have something like this. Right. Now I want this to be displayed in full size. Okay, so defaultly what happens? Uh, you are just specifying this is in a uh, directly. This is an entire one division. Right? Okay. So what I want? Let's create another container for this division for this image separately. Mm -hmm. So that I can specify the height and width. So are we limiting this height and width here? Okay. So, so this is again another bad practice that never use your height and width here. So I press it now. Okay, so now I have something like this. Mm -hmm. I want the same image to be of full length. Mm -hmm. Right? Now if you see uh, if I even stretch this, this is gonna look bad. Okay, mm -hmm. but still I want something like this, right? Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm putting one container here. Okay. Division. Let's say I am writing a class for that so that I can apply some CSS, right? So division class, let's say header okay. So in class you can specify hyphen, okay, and it is a standard practice to specify hyphen if you want in like this. So I'm closing my division here. If you just inspect this now, Now this is again a class. Mm -hmm. 
So write a selector. What should I write? Find in this name. Go to your CSS file. Okay. What will write dot and this particular class. Okay. So now this is a good practice that you will specify what is height and what width you want to okay but if you see uh, this is my image but the maximum width is this much now i cannot stretch it beyond this okay so we have something called let me try this object fit and this if i see okay. I don't think this will work. We need another image only as the size is smaller, it's not extending to this. So. Now, let's make it 1980 by 1280. So this is big enough. Copy the nice location and save the nice as. Place that address thing here. Copy link location. Okay. So. So. And index.html. Okay, now it is way too much bigger for me, right? Mm -hmm. So now let's uh, fix it with the height and width. Okay. So now if you see one of the important thing will be uh, fix the height okay and let the browser handle the width of this okay so how you can do this so you will just say let's say height is equals to let's say for now start with 500 pixel And bit is something called upper. Just tell it is taking this much. Okay, so I just post. 
100 pixel. Very exactly what like this image. So much So I need to use RC into the image. And this is just like this. So the green dot CSS. is 100% okay and height adjust to accordingly so this is what happening so if i make it 100% just taking this much up so i cannot keep it height at auto so i need to fix it Let's say if I say fifty percent. Okay. Now looks good. So whatever may be the height it was, I'm making it fifty percent and width I'm making it hundred percent. Okay. The so whatever with the existing height, the total height of it, okay, fifty percent of height. Okay. So next. Header name with the image tag now. Exactly. So now uh, this is another type of selector. So we have seen element selector, mm -hmm. we have seen class selector. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now if you want to specify uh, inside this selector, look for this. So th that means this is a parent. Mm -hmm. In this parent, if this is a child, mm -hmm. then apply this property. So it will search for this particular class and image tag in this particular parent, it will apply this property. Okay, so it's one of the type of your combined selectors. Okay, all right. So now what I want quickly, I just want to change the alignment. So I want to change the font color to blue, let's say, and the alignment should be centered for these two elements. Okay, what should I change? So if I go to my HTML page, uh, I'm writing with this something like this, right? So now this is the h2 tag again, but we have changed the color of h2 at the top. Mm -hmm. okay. So that is the reason it is conflicting here. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So I can define one class here mm -hmm. and set the properties like this. Okay. So I'll just say class handle hyphen text. Okay. And apply this. Yeah. So now if I want to apply the styles for this, what I'll write. So just go here and say oh, Title hyphen text. So let's change the color. And let's keep it same blue. Okay. And let's set some font size. So to set a font size, font size. So let's make it to our one. Okay, 
already right there, right? I don't use the background thing. I use one of these. I want it to be center aligned. What should I change? What? I want this two things to be center aligned. What property I can align? Text alignment center. So I said text hyphen align and I'll write center. Save it. Alright. Now I can upload. So are we setting a tag already for this? It's two tag are we setting alignment already? So what I will do? So oh, so we are directly specified this class for H2. Right? So let's say a division and inside this if I have this. So if I go to index.html or right, so this is a h2 for which I'm setting this and I have one deviation and in that division I have this h2 again at the top also I have the same structure right so that is the reason this CSS will not work here then okay so the header dot text Whether the word H2 so we are setting the text align right. As this is the element selector, okay. so for now I'll make it H3. And let's get over this. We will come back to the same problem when we discuss cascade element. Okay. So that you can tackle these things now. Right. So now I have something like this. Okay. But what I want now, I want this should have a smaller font than this H2. Okay. So how you can specify separately for this? What CSS should I specify? Okay, Mm -hmm. So here I have specified for header text, right? Mm -hmm. But for inside a header text, I have that H2 tag also and the parent of our, I mean, I have same class for mm -hmm. both this H3 and mm -hmm. P. Mm -hmm. But I want different styling for both this. Mm -hmm. You can use pair like for P tag. Inside that class, we use for P tag. Uh huh. It's uh, size, font size, whatever. Uh huh. So this is my header tag. Mm -hmm. right. So I'm saying paragraph. Mm -hmm. Okay, but this header tag. But this will check the parent. Mm -hmm. So now if I say font size. Do you think it will work? So see, what you're specifying is header dot text, right? When I write something like this, mm -hmm. the meaning is paragraph tag, mm -hmm. and inside that paragraph tag, I want a division with this mm -hmm. class. Mm -hmm. But if you see, I am having a paragraph mm -hmm. only yeah. for which that uh, class wow. is this, right? So I want a division, mm -hmm. and in this division, if there is a header dot text. Mm -hmm. Then for that font size equal to this. But now I have this two things, right? In short, so I'm writing a long structure then. So, so what I can do, I can define this division as something a class. Let's say class is equal to only header. Okay. So this is my header division. Inside that division, I have header dot text okay so inside this division now i have h3 and now i have paragraph 5. 
then maybe I, I don't need this particular thing. Okay. Uh, we are not using the same maps. So now here I go, I say dot header. But here what I need to write is it's still done. Okay. And here I will write dot header and then I'll write you are not like doing a text and center. Oh, okay. So here now I also need these things. I need a color also. And now I need this things also. Okay. Okay. So now this is looking fine. Okay. But just have a look here. So what you have done, you have specified header.x3, mm -hmm. color is same, alignment is same, right? Only color is different, uh, so the only right. size is different, right? But still you are writing this two repetition things, yeah. right? So good way, I want to avoid the repetition. So what I'll do, I'll say dot header, okay? So for this, I want to apply some common styles, and those are right. my color, so I'll cut it here, here and text align okay now if i take h3 i want only font size 2 and now if i say paragraph okay so this is how you will remove the duplication of your sources so this is also called as your refactoring okay now it will look the same So for the text, we have few more things. So we have already seen color. We have already seen align. Okay. Uh, I guess we discussed uh, text transform also, right? So what is text transform? If I want to convert it to the upper piece, lower piece, then I can use text transform. Okay. So it's too big. No. So so when I say font weight, it is how I can bold my font. Yeah. How much bold? My font. Okay. So this is my letter space in the hand. Okay, that is how much space I want in between two letters. Okay. So let's see these attributes. Okay, so, so the one which we see here, what I'm doing for this H3, I want to apply transform as the uppercase. Mm -hmm. So what should I write? The text I from transform and it should be uppercase. Okay. So I converted to the now uppercase and I applied something called letter spacing. So now if, if this is uh, so now this pi pixel looks too much, let's make it three more. Okay, so in between, now it will give okay, something like this. Right. Uh, then we have something called line height also. Okay. So now what is line height? So line height is the distance between two elements. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here if I say I have this header and in that header I can have multiple lines, right? Mm -hmm. So I can specify line height. That means in between two height the line I want how much distance. So now if I make it as a two pixel. Mm -hmm. Two lines, okay. How much distance? So now if I make it as a 10 pixel, if I see it, if I execute it, so in between now it will keep on increasing the distance. If I say 50 pixel, now if I refresh it, so in between these two lines now it will keep on increasing the distance. Okay.
Okay, so, so let's start with main thing. So now I have sections. Okay, I want one image. So for machine learning, I want this heading. Okay, on the left side, I want image, and on the right side, I want this. Okay. So this is my now layout. Okay. So to get a layout, what is the general way of doing it? So for this thing, you will specify two divisions. Okay. So this is one division, and this is gonna be the second division. Okay. Now you'll specify if I take the image, let's say it should have, uh, uh, occupy forty percent of the part of my division and sixty uh, percent part of my section. Right. Okay. So I want to create a structure like this. So let's say if I go to my index.html, right? So this is what we just finished. Now this is my section and okay. So here we are directly writing this is machine learning is h2 again. Okay. And we are writing this. Right. So next thing is your ID selector. So we are saying class selector, right? So for class selector, what we are writing? Dot and the class name right if i have id here and if i want to apply a specific styles related to this section only now okay then i can use uh, i have this id right so if i have id selected then i can go here and i can say hash and then specify the ID. okay so now if i go here Uh, I want let's say h2 inside this and my tag I want to set some style right so we will see ml then h2 tag inside it okay so let's change the color I don't think how much of that colors. So let's go with this. something. I want color this. I want let's say font size. So now font size defaultly uh, for the parent, so it will be 14 pixels, right? Mm -hmm. According to it, let's say I'm saying 1.5 pm with respect to parent. So now if I go here, now if I refresh it. Okay, still it is much more solid. Let's make it 3 here. Okay, machine one. Now let's create some division part of it now. Okay, so I have this. If I go to my code, okay. So I just created a uh, two separate section. Not much planning for this right at time. Now, what I'll do? So this is a header. I want one image here. So for that image, I'm creating one division. Okay. So I'm saying this is section image. Okay. So now for what this will be the class, right? Yeah. So class, this is section image. And this is opening tag. And let's say is closing division right uh, let me create a division content division class first now i'm writing section hyphen 
content okay now if you see uh, in the below division also i will have one image and the content right so now i can set same style for all the divisions using this okay so i'm opening this so now entire thing should be inside of this this entire paragraph I'm putting one tab and here let's close this division. Okay, just check if everything is fine. So Okay, so if I collapse it, everything is there. Alright, so this is section image and this is section content. Okay. I don't think so. It should be down so no, we don't have here. So let me quickly search an email on machine learning. In my index.html, now here in this section, I'm adding this image particular. So, let's say I'm in JSRC. Oops, control C. And if I save it, right here. Refresh it. Okay, so I'm getting something like this. So let's set some properties now. Right. So this is the entire section. So if I go to my main.css, this is my entire ML, right? So I am setting particularly for this ML and then we have the class right. Mm -hmm. So what is the class name for that? Yeah, so we specify the section image here. So, so if you have something called section image, then for that particular division, mm -hmm. uh, you need to limit width to 40 percent of the parent okay and i'm saying height should be proper let's see if i'm getting correct or not let's Okay. Now this is done, but still I want the content to be on the right hand side of this image, right? For that we have something called flow property. Okay, so what float will do inside the division now it will specify how it should be floating. Okay, uh, I think we should keep another parent here. Uh, 
otherwise it will not work let's get it right The next uh, section we have what is the title of that? So, so section mm -hmm. of if I say I need to put a dot. So here I need to specify the width. Let's say this should be sixty percent. Now you can see for, for this particular image, I have set float on the left hand side, and I'm saying that content should always float on the right hand side of the image. Let's uh, so this is cloud computing side from there. Yeah, we need to handle this. So how it is working now? It's completely on the right, right hand side. So the concept of float is uh, when you specify something as a float. Okay, now you are actually moving that particular part from actual main flow of the country. Mm -hmm. So that is the reason now. Normally, this is my machine learning is there. Mm -hmm. After that, there is one division, mm -hmm. and after that, there is a cloud computing. So that's the reason once this particular division goes over, it is actually specifying or uh, directly something here. Because when I specify a flow, it is actually um, changing the flow of my content. Okay. Mm -hmm. So first thing what I need to do, okay, so let's add some padding and everything here. Okay. So what should I add? Padding or margin? Padding. Uh, why padding? So if you see now I have two divisions, okay. Mm -hmm. One division is holding this image one division holding this content okay uh, in between them if i add a margin that means it will separate this to a part right so if i say from the section content for this i will add let's say left margin only So if I say margin left is equals to let's say 10 pixels. Now 
where is my content so it gave this here machine learning is here like this okay so now this is my cloud we will set one more thing here what is our top body for dot and I print it section hyphen body. Okay. So if I do this, we have something called block here. Is it changing anything? Because if I see if my image and my paragraph both are uh, inline elements, right? Mm -hmm. So what I want that everything in this block should be inline block. And when I say inline block, uh, it will not put in a new line. Mm -hmm. Okay. But how about if I just start it as mm -hmm. default it is inline, so I don't need to create any change here. So we don't like this. I the text again. But still, it's completely floating around this only. Mm -hmm. uh, section content we have it. Right? So I guess float we need only. And why my content without margin? So I'll think about this. No white not working. Okay. Mm, now I have this. I have this. When I'm saying before starting this, I want a left margin. It is not working. Okay. Uh, so. If I add a margin right here, uh, as I try to fix a uh, shift it, it is actually going on the mm -hmm. new line. How about kind of pattern? Adding it with this time. Still the same. Mm -hmm. It's been the same for What we can do? What we can do? So this is section content. This is section image. Uh, section comma. So let press the margin. Right. Is it getting loaded or not? So if I see here. So this is my color, it is taking font size as 2. 
So section a testing index. If I say for the image, okay, so this is auto left. So we added some CSS for section body also, right? But this is not loading. Instead of using float, if I just specify that as an inline term for both of them, and if I give it a try, that so one section is my image, and I want to add a display as a block, and here I have my content which should be also display as a block. Now this is putting a lot of margin on the right hand side. So if I remove this kind of margin. Content for this. So now some bread is basically so. This is my third. It keeps on floating, keeps on floating. I'll figure this out. Mm -hmm. For now, let's keep it as float right only. Right. And I'm not able to add margin, so it will be at the as of now. Okay, so I will have something like this. So let's uh, specify quickly the font color, the font style also. Font family. And I guess we have serif here, sans serif, and let's quickly set font size equals to ppm. ppm is to be
Uh, now I need to do the same thing with the remaining also. Okay, as I have defined the classes, now it will be similar to apply the styles from here. Okay. It's just we have to see uh, if I have to apply it for all the sections, right? Mm -hmm. Then I can instead of specifying this particularly, you know, I can just say it as a section tag mm -hmm. and for all the two tags in the section. So now if I refresh it, so for all the technologies I will create, I will get the same kind of font size. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, the next thing I want, uh, I want the image and the content here. So I'm quickly modifying this here. So for the section ML, this is done. So for this last time we added a figure also. Right. So, so I'm creating this division and for this class is section body. Okay. So everything in this section should be with this star inside of this block. This is figure image. So closing this division. So the structure based. So for now, let's say uh, for this, I will have content on the left hand side and the text on the right hand side. Okay. So, so for this division, where is my division? Image rendered text. Okay. And now this paragraph will come here. Why this image is not loading in MGSRC? Uh, we are overriding the height on both types. So, 
55 buttons. Then I have this power pad. And I come to image. Cloud computing, this is the content. Oh, okay, I'm getting the content here. So now we are completely facing this problem just because of this float. Mm. So because of that, this one getting this cloud here, and it's everything going here. So again, now you just see it's uh, applying the default step. Now I just change, keep the same header type. Right? Mm. So it automatically applied that it should be on the left hand side and content on the right hand side. So this is fine uh, for in machine learning. So this will work, but the section title and this is my entire footer. Right. So move to the right hand side. So it's completely because of that flow back to it. So I'll figure this out. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we'll discuss it next time about this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So anything which I planned today to cover anything which is missing. Alright. So links. Okay. So yeah. So we discuss linear argument mm -hmm. and float. We have to discuss it again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's discuss opacity also. So what is opacity? That when I uh, hover this image, right, nothing is happening. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can uh, increase or decrease the opacity of this on a hover. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what opacity means? Uh, that uh, how much prominently this particular image is displayed. Okay. Mm -hmm. So where is our CSS for this image? Um, at the top. Which to navbar? No, this is not. Okay. So header image, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So here, yeah, defaultly the opacity is one. Okay, if I make opacity zero, okay, image is there. Okay, but it's completely transparent. Opacity is for the hover. no no no. So it's just a normal. So now I'm just doing for the normal one. So opacity defined how much transparent the image. Okay, so initially it is one. So if this is defaultly one, it will display your image. Okay, if I say zero point seven five, okay, bit blurred. Okay, so if I zero point five, okay, a bit more blur. Okay, so let's say initially it is looking like this. Okay. And on forward, so this effect you must have seen in multiple things. Mm -hmm. That this is a normal image, but what I will do if this image is hovered, mm -hmm. okay. So, how to set a hover effect? So, yeah. okay. then at that time, I want to change the opacity to one. Okay, so now look here. So if I hover it, now it will change to opposite. Okay, so it's kind of another transition effect which you will so find in a multiple places. Okay, so, uh, so whenever you have this background image, right? So for a background image, also, uh, if you see the website of Udacity, right? For every image, they actually for the image also they apply a background color and generally they apply a gradient. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is my image. What I can do? Where is our gradient for header? This our image. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm setting a background also. So just have a look. Um, so what I'll do? Let's start with one. Not a 
So if I set the image, yes, it will not be visible. Mm -hmm. But if I want to set a transition, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to do that. So if I set that, right? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how you can do like this? Okay. So next time we'll discuss that also. So if you just see, that's it. So the image is something different and on top of that they apply one gradient of mm -hmm. a shade okay so that also you can okay so, so today we mainly talked about uh, different selectors and different properties mm -hmm. so we discussed what is class selector mm -hmm. we discussed what is id selector right and then we say see the combined selector also mm -hmm. okay so if I have to apply same style on multiple uh, types of element, mm -hmm. I can either specify it like this, that is H1 comma H2, mm -hmm. okay. Or if I want uh, all the paragraph mm -hmm. inside H2, mm -hmm. then I can write like this, mm -hmm. okay. So this is one of the example of the combined selectors, okay. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we have seen various different properties today, mm -hmm. starting from your uh, multiple for your text. So we have assigned that is line height right so it is a line height mm -hmm. so a different distance between two lines if i want to set right then we have seen letter spacing mm -hmm. right so i can use a letter spacing mm -hmm. then property wise so for link we have seen that on our attribute mm -hmm. right so then we have seen linear gradient mm -hmm. Okay, so this will make it more attractive. Okay. Uh, and we are mainly facing issues with floats. Okay, so we we'll start next time with again floats and all these transitions. Okay. Check. So, I'll stop you for today, right? Mm -hmm.